I'm no veterinarian, but being unqualified to talk about a subject has never stopped me before. Actually, we're just going to talk about what you need to be aware of as a snake keeper and what you can track and how to track it so that you know if maybe your snake has a problem. And I think I can talk about that at least as well as maybe a vet tech or the front desk person maybe. Welcome to the Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Evie, an example of a snake that I regularly check on. All of my snakes are examples of snakes that I regularly check on, but uh, Evie happened to be awake and alert right before Kent started rolling. So, Speaking of Kent, say hello to my brother, our cameraman. Hi everyone! Kent, let's say that you had a pet that you weren't deathly afraid of, so not a snake. I have a snake! Eric the Murderer! Okay, well, let's use the puppet for this example then. How would you know if Eric was in need of a trip to the veterinary office? I would just ask him, Eric, are you interested in murdering someone with an advanced degree in veterinary medicine? Sure, we snakes love to eat people regardless of their level of education. Snakes don't discriminate. That's actually one plus for snakes, is they're not discriminatory. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner. These snake facts have been brought to you by Eric and Kent of Kent's Corner, but just in a different corner. Hey you guys, I just want to take a moment and interrupt to let you know that Patreon for Green Room Pythons is here. Uh, I got a lot of messages from people after my last video in support of me starting a Patreon account. So I've done it. I've got two levels up right now and uh, some perks there, and I'm still trying to figure out the perks. So it's going to be cool, though. I've got some ideas, and, and there will be more stuff added later. But right now, other than extra Kent content, there is going to be some, some extra breeding content that I'm going to put up for Patreon only. And right now, there is videos of Freya's new clutch that's hatched and out of the egg uh, that I haven't announced yet until, I guess, right now, and including a video of the last baby who took 24 hours longer than everybody else, but the very last baby coming out of the egg. So not pipping, but actually emerging from the egg and coming out, I caught on video because I happened to be looking in the incubator when it happened. So really excited about that. Really excited about Patreon. Uh, go check it out if, if you're interested in supporting the channel. The link is in the description below. The main focus of this video is to talk about what I keep track of and how I keep track so that if a snake is acting funny or just acting differently than they normally do, I can easily identify that. Also, if a snake does need a trip to the vet for some reason, you can have that record there to answer all the vet's questions and let them know what the snake's history is. I may make a series of videos on health things, but, but this one issue of keeping track is one of the most important things for your snake's health. You know, if you have a dog or a cat, it's pretty easy to tell if they're having a problem. They'll be limping or they'll, or they'll uh, you know, not be as rambunctious as they normally are or something like that. Uh, they'll be whining. But you know, snakes don't whine. They don't make facial expressions. And sometimes it's really hard to tell if there's anything going on, you know, physically with the animal or emotionally with the animal. You know, they don't like something about their, their husbandry or something like that. But, uh, it's difficult to take your snake to the vet and go, Doctor, my lethargic snake is starting to act lethargic. There are external things on your snake that obviously you can track. We're not going to talk a lot about that, but you know, you obviously you would track if your snake started to get scale rot or mites or uh, um, mouth rot, a burn or a scratch from a from a live prey or something like that. You would track that, and you would probably take your snake to the vet. But writing down the subtleties of everything that's going on with your animal is important. If you have an exotic animal at all, and I know people don't consider ball pythons exotic because they're, they're so common, but an exotic animal is anything that's not domesticated. So not a dog or a cat or a farm animal, basically, uh, would be an exotic pet. And if you have an exotic pet, having a diary for them where you write everything down is really important. I don't use these diaries anymore because I'm now using an app. Uh, as as your your family of snakes grows, 
you may find that, that using a handwritten diary takes a little bit longer, so I've transferred everything to an app at this point. Uh, but I still have these, and if you just have one snake or, or a few snakes, these are really easy to just, you know, have a snake, have their diary, and you, you enter stuff in there. So the types of things that I enter into the diary are uh, obviously any major events. You know, when the inspector had a respiratory infection, I entered everything about that, every vet visit, everything that the vet said, any treatment that we were doing. So obviously that kind of stuff, but also every time I feed the snake and every time they refuse food, I might put in what size prey it was, um, anything about their behavior that I found interesting, I might, I might put that in there because even though that's not uh, medically significant necessarily, it's still fun to track and look back on stuff like that. Um, hi there. Hi babes, are you checking out my nose? If you're a very busy person who cares for snakes, it's oftentimes hard to remember, you know, what day did I feed them last week? And did this snake refuse the week before or did they refuse last week? Or have they refused a few weeks in a row? That's hard to remember sometimes, even if you just have one or two snakes. Water changes I track, just so I know I'm doing it every three days. That's an easy one. Anytime the enclosure gets fully cleaned out or there's an enclosure upgrade or a substrate media change, I'll mark that down. You know, if your snake stops eating for a while, you can look back and go, oh, I just changed his substrate from paper to, to cocoa husk, and then he started refusing. So maybe change back to paper. That's the kind of stuff that after four weeks of refusals, you might forget when you last changed that. Uh, or, or, you know, if that, if that correlates to, to the change of the, of the substrate. Defecation you can log. I used to log every time they pooped. I would just put the date and say that they pooped, but it's not really, it doesn't really matter. I, I log if there's, if there's a problem with their poop. Uh, when Echo first came in, my little super dwarf, she had diarrhea for a couple of poops. And so I logged those for sure. And I was keeping track of those. And then they went solid eventually, and I figured that it probably just had to do with the stress of shipping. I log their weight. That's important to me when they're younger. You know, I like to see the the how how quickly they're they're growing or how slowly they're growing, and it's important for breeding females that that are around that fifteen hundred gram mark to see exactly where they're at, uh, and it's important to see if they've lost any weight if they're off food for a while. So um, otherwise, you know, if I had a hundred snakes, I probably wouldn't keep track of their weight as much. I would just sort of eyeball it. I log their sheds. There's really no reason to do that, except for, I guess, maybe a prelay shed, but I put it down. I log every stage of the breeding process. There's a lot of different things that you can log there that I won't go into, but um, I put all those in and uh, I, I log any general notes on their, just their, their behavior or anything that's interesting that I might want to look at later that, again, is not maybe medically significant, but is interesting for for me to look at and to track uh i track their their target training i'm target training some of these snakes uh there's a there will be a video coming out about that but every time i target train i uh log that and i say what the result is so that i can sort of track that and see how the snakes are learning i'd like to give you a real world example of what i might write in one of these so now a dramatized reading of a snake diary from the book of lucille May 2nd, pairing with the inspector, 10.30 a.m. May 3rd, oops, he was not supposed to go in with her. Supposed to be Damara, no lock as far as I could tell. Pulled him out at 7 a.m. May 8th, actual pairing with the inspector, 10 p.m. May 12th, feeding day, took two mice. May 15th, pink belly. May 17th, refused mouse, possibly due to shed. May 23rd, palpated, felt follicles about two-thirds down, and possibly poop closer to the tail. Well, friends, I'm feeling tired, and I think that's enough for tonight. We'll definitely pick this back up next time and finish the book. Or we probably won't. I'll probably never do this again. I find that I use these most for looking back a couple of months to see what kind of the behavior is. But there's long-term stuff too. Like for instance, the inspector who lives in that enclosure has a little green dot on the top of his nose. And when he first got that months ago, I thought, oh, that's maybe an abscess or some kind of weird thing. I need to have a vet check it out. So I did. And the vet, um, this, was, this was right when he was getting his respiratory infection. So I was taking him to the vet anyway for that. And uh, the vet didn't seem to 
think it, it was much of a problem. So I have it logged down and it hasn't gotten any worse. It stayed there the whole time. He still has this green dot. Uh, and I've logged it so I can look back and see what date I first noticed it. And if it gets worse, I can, I can, you know, keep an eye on it. What do you think that is? Has anybody else encountered a dot like that? I mean, I feel like it might be a rub mark on his nose or something, but again, it's never gotten any worse. And sometimes it gets a little bit better and then it, and then it gets to, to a certain point. It never goes beyond that certain point. So I don't know what it is. We'll see. Um, Look at Evie sort of poking out of my beard. Or maybe you've got an adult male reticulated python and he's attacking you all the time all of a sudden. You can look back a year and go, oh yeah, he was attacking me last year too. This is the day that I screamed like Jay Brewer and it was breeding season. So maybe it's just a breeding season thing that he does. So this is hypothetical, you guys. I don't have a male reticulated python and I would never scream like Jay Brewer. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe I would. Give me a 250 pound retic and let's see if I scream. No, geez, if you get a 250 pound snake, I quit. I don't care what mom says. As I mentioned before, I use an app now. I'm not using these diaries anymore. Just as, you know, as your collection grows, you'll find that it's easier to just have everything digitally on an app. So a couple of weeks ago when I was on an airplane, I spent that time, instead of watching Arrested Development reruns, I entered everything into Husbandry Pro, at least everything that I could off the top of my head takes a while to enter even, I think I only entered 11 snakes in there and uh, it takes a while to get all the information in and then over the last couple of weeks, I've added more stuff from the from the diaries. The cool thing about, about this app, again, there, there are a bunch of apps, so check them all out and see what works for you. I'm using Husbandry Pro just because it kind of has some heat right now. A lot of people are using it. I think it's the newest one out and it has a ton of features and it's not that expensive, but I can track all the things that I mentioned. Plus like the, the breeding stuff is cool because I can track, I've got a clutch in the incubator that's into Husbandry Pro and all those eggs can be instantly turned into animals once they hatch. And those all of a sudden are all in the system. So it's pretty cool. Regardless of the system that you use, my biggest health tip is to track everything, write everything down in some sort of system so that you have it there. Again, these animals are exotic animals. They're, it's harder to tell if they're having an issue and they're also not disposable animals. They're not something that, you know, you just throw in a box and hope they live for a couple of years. Uh, these, you know, this ball python is a baby right now, but she should live 25, 30 plus years in captivity and uh, keeping track of everything that's going on with her is an important part of making sure that she lives a long life. You know what's important to keep track of is how many people your snakes murder. Well, Kent, the number so far would be zero then. You don't know that, you go out of town a lot and who knows what your snakes do while you're gone. It could be zero murders or it could be thousands of murders. This is, I'm keeping track. It's an estimate. If you liked this video, let me know by hitting the like button and making a comment letting me know that you liked it. If you disliked it, you can hit that button too. If you're not yet a subscriber, that's also just a button that you could click. Really easy to do that and it helps my channel a lot. So if you're into the channel, uh, do me a favor, hit a couple buttons, make a comment, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check out the new Patreon. Links in the description below. <laughs>